just you get to choose. Right? Like here's here's the scenario: the, the environment gives us something which can be perceived as negative, can be perceived as not working, can be perceived as problematic. The world's ending. So we get to choose to see it like that, or we get to see choose to see it as an opportunity. So clearly, that it's my responsibility now to do that for other people. If I have information, and you know, other people's success is my success, and vice versa. Because you know what, like the challenges or the roadblocks are the journey themselves. There's no big things. It's all little things compounding on top of each other. Welcome everybody to another episode of Truth Seekers with Coach Nick Davies and myself, Coach Josh Greco. We have a guest today. Welcome, Josh Painter. Thank you. Thank you for thanks, being guys. here. Yeah, thanks for being here. And I, I, we can always um, introduce our guests a million different ways. And some things I like. Sometimes I like to have the guests introduce themselves. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know that we'll jump into a, a natural conversation with you. Sure thing, man. Um, so I. Right now, in in residential real estate brokerage, and also um, coaching people outside of of real estate. Um, but then the lead into how I got there is um, had my son when I was seventeen. Um, lived a life for a good twelve to fourteen years that I thought others expected of me, and then around thirty, I had a turning point where I kind of lost everything. I did the trifecta of bad credit. I lost a house bankruptcy and divorce all within a year. Um, and then, uh, you know, got into real estate, turned things around and, uh, that's, that's basically it. Um, side note, I, um, used to be a corrections officer, a jail guard for five years. So little known fact, and I also love uh, music and love playing the drums. Fascinating how you just dropped all that amazing stuff, George. And then you said, that's just, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. It's so funny though, right? Because our story is our story and like no matter how powerful it's gosh goodness sounds like it is it, it's it's still ours and it's like a different thing than uh than someone else getting reflection on it but thanks for sharing that some crazy stuff yeah yeah i never know i never never know where to start should i start now or should i start with a 17 year old having a baby and one one thing that sticks out for me is that you said you were living the life that other people thought you should be living is that how you said that Tell me, yeah i just I, yeah, I feel like, um, you know, my son being born at 17 kind of set me on a trajectory of things that I thought you were supposed to do, right? I thought you were supposed to get married. That, you know, that makes sense. Um, I thought I was supposed to get a real job and real jobs, whether, whether it was any, whether, it was, whether I was passionate about it or not, I just felt like I needed a full time regular job, you know, and then that led to, oh, I got to rent an apartment. I've got to get, credit card so that I can buy things and then and, uh, just, you know, down that path. And so what was it that got you out of it? Was it, was it the birth of your son or what, what was it? No, that's what started it. I think, um, what got me out of it was, uh, my 30th birthday. I, I just remember thinking, okay, I've lived my entire twenties, uh, this life that I didn't really plan out or even take an active role in. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do something different, then tomorrow I'll wake up and before you know it, I'll be 40 and I'll have lived 10 more, 10 more years like this. So that was the turning point. Um, I kind of, I, I mean, I went through a period of just quitting my job and kind of give like tossing things aside and deciding I'm going to do what I want now. And, and was that empowering or to walk us through that? Because I think that's such a crucial part. I think mm. anybody who's, I don't know, enlightened or aware or gone through this awakening uh, remembers that very vividly. So we'll just take us down a deeper level into that, if you could. Yeah, it's it's really a process, right? It never happens overnight. But I think the first thing that happened is I had been working in a jail for five years and working in a jail often feels like being in jail because... <laughs> You know, it's, uh, men, grown men in cages is not an uplifting environment. Um, and 12 and a half hour shifts, right? So I would wake up at 4, 4.30 in the morning to get ready for work. The sun's not out. And by the time I got off work at 6.30 p.m., the sun was no longer out. So, I mean, I would go long stretches without even seeing sunshine or the sun. And 
And then we would switch from day shift to night shift every three months. So it was just wrecks your circadian rhythm. So I remember thinking like, I don't care if I lose every any, everything and become homeless. I just can't do this anymore. Uh, so instead of becoming homeless, I decided to find something that would possibly, you know, make up the income that I'd lose by not having that job anymore. Around that time, I got into real estate. That was in 2005. I started doing mortgage loans. 2007, eight, the whole world crashed. I didn't have enough experience or time in the business to sustain through that. So went back, got a real job again. Um, and so during that, you know, during the next, I would say nine months, it started with realizing I didn't have enough money to pay my bills, including my house payment. So the first thing was bankruptcy. A few months later, after not making your house payment, you lose your house. And then a few months after that, um, decided to end, uh, in the marriage. So, um, around the same time I was getting into real estate, uh, or I should say keeping real estate going and, and not giving up on that, even though I had a real, a regular job. Um, and I just remember thinking like, you know, I've just got to stick with this. Um, and you know, I was like two, three months behind on my rent. I had a $650 a month apartment with two bedrooms. So my kids could have a room and I slept on the couch and, um, I mean, everything was taking forever to close, but, but I remember getting into real estate, uh, switch, switching from mortgage to real estate and just thinking like, okay, so the way that it happened was I was doing a mortgage loan and it was taking forever to close and someone was buying a house for 150,000 and putting 50% down. So the loan was about 75 grand. And I remember it closed like months late because nobody knew what was going on back then with foreclosures and whatnot. And at the end of the day, I think I made 400 bucks and I called the real estate agent to congratulate her. And she was like, oh, this wasn't really a big deal for me. I think I only made $4,000 on this deal. And I just quickly realized I was on the wrong side of the deal. Uh, so I went that day, um, signed up with a real estate office. I bought a bunch of open house signs and I put them up around a foreclosure and about 40 people came in and one person wrote an offer. Now I didn't get that, the offer accepted that day, but I just remember thinking, oh, if I just do this for eight hours a day, there's no way I'm not going to sell one house a month. Um, and so that's what I did. I did open houses every day. I posted other listings on the internet and got people to call on them, um, walked flyers around. And so at the end of the day, within a few months, I started regularly selling, you know, one, two, three houses a month. Um, so that was like, that's the evolution of the turning point. My, my long winded answer. No, it's great stuff, Josh. Do, do you remember in the moment of the turning 30, like I said, it, it was a combination of things at once, but because I always find this fascinating to go back to and think about points in my story that are easier to look at the break prompts going backwards than it was forward. But is there any particular moments or threshold thing when you thought like, that's it? Like, was it, was it really on your 30th birthday? Like, was it that day or was it like, because I think it's really important to think about for people that are watching, listening, that whether you're thinking about going where that next part of your journey is, it often isn't something that's like this slap yourself in the face, like, oh, there it is. Like you said it as though it's a co com combination of things, but you pointed on your 30th birthday. How was that really for you? What gave you the certainty to do something? I mean, my 30th birthday was when I really reflected that like, I can't live like this anymore. Um, but that was in January. So if I'm picking an actual date, it would be June 28th, 2008, you know, that was the day that, you know, I think I scrounged up enough money. I think, I mean, it's so funny. I sold a Honda Civic and, uh, and I took like, I think I made $2,000 and, that was enough to get an apartment and, you know, leave a situation. So, I mean, that was, that was the date. Why do I remember that? I don't know, but that was the day that everything changed. I'm, I'm wondering, Josh, as you think back on that, 
like we're we're living a version of breadcrumbs right now for our future self, right? So think five, ten years down the road. What distinctions might you be thinking about now? You know, just simply because we're having this conversation about your future self that you're thinking about now versus, you know, having a conversation now about your past self. I mean, I think the difference is, you know, right now, future self. I mean, you just think a lot more about, you know, happiness and purpose and fulfillment. You know, those weren't those. It's kind of funny how younger me just didn't take those things into consideration, you know? So, yeah. And, and, you know, older, older me, uh, sees what's really important in life, you know, knows that you don't live other people's expectations. Um, you know, the, the top, top five regrets of the dying. Number one is I wish I'd lived a life that was true to myself and not one that others expected of me. So I think I'm constantly, um, I mean, I guess now I'm realizing, I think I, I think I'm always looking to older people or people that are 10, 20 years ahead of me and trying to glean any kind of knowledge perspective, you know, because I know that 40, I'm, I'm, I'll be 45 very soon. I know 45 year old me thinks very differently than 35 year old me. So I, I think it's always in the back of my mind that uh, yeah, I mean, I love that this is called truth seekers, but I, I, I even say in my book, like what's true now is was wasn't true a hundred years ago and what's true now might probably won't be true a hundred years from now. So, um, so in that sense, I'm very cognizant that I don't know shit and, you know, um, people that are 10, 20 years ahead of me, they know way more than I do. So I'm always trying to figure out, um, how to get where they're at without aging in the process. <laughs> <laughs> how how can younger me get everything that they've already gotten out of life, but still, you know, maintain my youth? Yeah, there's there's no substitute for experience. Um, sometimes we have to go through some of those things to realize the things that we realize today. What I, what I like about what you're saying is that we can listen and, and trust and have faith of the people who have lived it and the gap that we haven't lived yet, and that they know what they're talking about because they've lived it too. And yeah. who knows, maybe their lived experiences are, has what caused, caused them to age. So maybe you can have it both ways. You don't have to age and you get the experience just by listening. Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to inevitably age, but, uh, you know, the, the faster you can learn from their mistakes or their, uh, experience, the better. Yeah. Success leaves clues, right? It's a bit, it's a big part of what we do as coaches is look at, okay, well, what industry or area do we want to improve in? Uh, we typically work with business owners, right? So it's like, well, what, how can we get there faster and what the best practice? And if you follow people that have been successful before you do those things, you get those results. Yeah. And you yeah. can learn from those things that they, they did or didn't do. And just, you can get there quicker. You can compress time, but yeah. the, the actual fulfillment in life comes from your particular version of it, of course, which is mm -hmm. why people can get successful, let's say on paper, but perhaps not happy because they're, They've done the science that they follow the clues, but not necessarily for what they want overall. So sure. uh, just in that intersection, Josh, like, Josh, can what would you say to you? said you're about to turn 45. What might you say to your 40 year old self? Like what's the nugget there? Like, because if you're doing this, doing this work, it sounds like that there's some things that have popped up for you and because you can bounce it around, right? Because they said what was true a hundred years ago may not be true now, may not be true in a hundred years but they're all true in the moment and some things cycle back around. Right. And so I, I know it's true for me that there's some things that are true for me now that weren't a few years ago, but were a few years before that, of course. So it kind of cycles around. So what have you seen just in that timeline in the last five years, what would you go back and tell your 40 year old self? Say? I would tell 40 year old me that uh, up until now time has been moving very slow for you and you've been taking it all in and you've been enjoying it and it's about to speed up really quickly now. Um, I, I just, I can't believe it feels like yesterday that I had, I had my 40th birthday, uh, me and some friends, we played music. We had all of our friends there. We rented out a place. It feels like yesterday. I can't believe that was five years ago. Um, yeah, your body's going to start to feel different. Um, you know, you've gotten away with maybe not taking care of yourself from time to time. That's no more. Um, I mean, just, you know, you really have to, uh, I feel like once you hit 40, it's like 
you really need to start doing all the things that you know that you're supposed to be doing. Um, but it's really, it's going to matter more now than ever, you know, like that for the first time, um, you're not going to feel old, but you're not going to feel young anymore. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, so my wife and I are both, I mean, we're literally going to be 45 in two months. So, um, she hates me now because I always go, you realize we're going to be senior citizens in 10 years. <laughs> And she's like, I hate you. Don't tell. <laughs> right. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't hit you because you know, you just feel like you're, I just, I still feel like I'm in my mid to late thirties, but I'm not. Uh, so I'm, I'm cl way closer to 50 than I've ever been. So it's crazy. I, I've, um, I saw this silly thing online the other day, you like, like it was like a hoodie and the, the, the red, um, Try to act your age. I can't act my age. I've never been this age before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. super poignant for me though, Josh, because my wife's about to turn 40 this week. And mm -hmm. we're doing a trip and a whole big thing and stuff as well. So it's super interesting to feel that because if I think about when I was, because I'm a couple of months younger than her, I think about when I was 35, same same sort of story, right? And like, what is it that you put it down to when you can see it so much clearer now? And you go back and you go back, you go back to that person and go... <laughs> And so, and then uh, what is that? And then how do you play it the way around? So how do you ask the reverse question? What would 50 year old Josh tell 44 year old Josh? Give me your thoughts on that because I, I think it's a really fascinating place to play. Yeah, I, I think 50 year old Josh is going to tell 45 year old Josh, I'm glad that you spent the last five years uh, taking care of your health, uh, prioritizing what's important to you. And uh, uh, you know, keeping on doing the things that you know is going to t that you're going to have to do to get us to a hundred. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if we tie this all in a bow here, you know, uh, with what you said earlier about fulfillment and achievement, um, you know, the more that you think about that, right. So you've lived life since age 30. Now thinking about those things, how much easier is it to, you know, would you, would you say you're in that state? Are you, how do you know that you're in the right place, that you're, you're doing the right things and surrounding yourselves with the right people and even have like the right occupation to be able to accomplish that right now? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's a great question, man. I, I, I don't know that I have the right occupation, right? Cause I haven't tried everything. Um, one of the things I like to say is find passion in things that you're good at. You know, there's this, there's this thing nowadays to follow your passion, but what you've got is people that they like to cook, but they burn things or they like to take photos, but they take crappy photos. And it's like, you know, the, the tricky part is finding what you're really good at and then finding passion in that. Right. So, you know, residential real estate, I, it turns out I'm really good at it and I don't, I might not love it at times, but, um, you know, we've, found ways to make it impactful. You know, if you donate to charity with every closing and involve your clients and, and, and stakeholders in that, you can definitely become passionate about that. Right. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I think it kind of segued yeah. there. Well, and I'm wondering how your definition of, of fulfillment and achievement and all those things changes. I think you kind of just answered it right there. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, once you realize, what it is for you, what that formula is, then there's also like a responsibility that, that comes with it to help other people along the way. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I teach is, you know, if, if you're struggling to find uh, a life's purpose or, or a purpose in life, you, you can latch on to the idea that your purpose in life is to become the best version of yourself, your best version ever. And the cool thing is you get to choose what that looks like. You can, and you can change your mind, you know? Um, I, I think it's fun to, to change your, your iteration and, and reinvent yourself. So, you know, yeah, I, I think the cool thing is that your, your best version today is not going to be your best version tomorrow, right? It could look totally different. So, and, and that's the fun part. I feel like I want to buy Coach Nick a hoodie. It says, be the best version of yourself. He says, like, I, I don't know what it is. I, I have never been the best version of myself as much yeah. as I am right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Josh, what do you think prevents people from doing that? Oh, I mean, most people, they, they either, they don't think that it's for them, right? It's for other people. Um, 
or fear, you know, fear of change, right? Some of those turning points are scary. It's scary to rock the boat. It's scary to live a life that isn't expect, you know, that it's scary to leave a life that others expect of you. There's a lot of pushback, you know, even, even when you become a better version of yourself or become your best version ever at that point, you can start, some people can start to be like, oh, you've changed, you know? Um, and I, and I, I say, good. Thank That's you. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're supposed to. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but some people, you know, might be turned off by that. So, yeah. Gosh, I'm wondering if we can parlay this into, um, you know, some of your things that you're working on right now, you're obviously very close. Actually, by the time this gets released, I think we'll be on the other side of that, but maybe speak to, um, some of, some of what you've been working on in these recent months here. Yeah. So, I mean, all year long. So every year I do a, a goal setting event. It's, it's called best version ever. Um, and then at the very last one, which was last December, almost a year ago, um, a lot of the feedback I got was, Hey, we love doing this event every year. Um, we love taking massive action. It would be really nice to know why, why some of this, these things that we do at the, this event work. And so, you know, I'm, I love setting goals. Um, I love doing them at the end of the year, um, leading into the beginning of a year. Um, I hate setting new year's resolutions on January 1st because most people are intoxicated and then you wake up and the first day, uh, you're already off to a bad start. So I like to do them at the beginning of December. That way, you know, you're a month in come, come January 1st and you don't get derailed if you celebrate that night. But, uh, one of the goals I set was to actually, uh, write a book that contained everything I had learned, you know, about personal development and, and, and achieving and becoming your best version ever. And so, um, matter of fact, I just got the, the first, uh, author copy right now. Yeah. Uh, hey. yeah thank you. Yeah, you just let's, came. Let's that. Um, that. what's that? Can you hold it up again? I want to see the cover. Yeah. Yeah. That. Awesome. Yeah. It's Love pretty that. cool. So, um, but yeah, this, uh, book best version ever releases on November 29th. 2022. So that's, that's literally what I've been working on all year long. I, I completely underestimated what it takes to write a book. So. <laughs> oh man. How, how, how much of, of, of it did, you, did it take you? Like what was the impact in terms of that resources, I guess, time, time and mental energy? Yeah. It, it's interesting because I would set aside at least one to two hours a day but that's just the time that I would set aside. And then there was, you know, inspirational spurts of like, oh, I can work on this. And I mean, there was times where I'd sit on the couch all day and then my back would hurt because I'd just be sitting. No one writes a book standing up, right? Can we just all acknowledge that? So, I mean, it was, it was a lot of sitting, um, <laughs> lots of sitting. So uh, just hours. And, and um, so from start to finish, it was about seven months. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, that, that, that actually sounds fast when I say it. Right. And, and so what I'm discounting when I say that is the five years that I was throwing ideas and things on a word doc, right. right and just right. Had all this jumbled stuff. I mean, that was probably off and on for five years. If I'd get an idea or I'd think like, Oh, if I write a book someday, that's going to be in there and that's going on the word doc. And so January is when I kind of started sifting through all of that. Yeah. So five years and seven months. As an aspiring author myself, I plan on writing and being, being very prolific someday. Uh, what's the mm -hmm. best advice you can give to other authors? My best advice to other authors is if, if you have a book in you, which you probably do, if you're asking the question is to just do it, meaning just find somebody to help you with, with it. Um, and, and write that first check or charge that first credit card. And I say that as someone who talked about it for years, and I know people that have talked about it for years and they get gung ho. And then you ask them months later how it's going and they've just abandoned it because it's so daunting to just sit down with a keyboard and, and no map or no direction. So, I mean, there's, there's courses you can take, there's editors you can hire to help you along the way, but I, you know, nothing gave me more accountability than paying people to hold me accountable, you know? So right, exactly. as soon as I paid the first amount, I was like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> and it, it would not have happened if I hadn't done that. So something about that skin in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, it's at this point in our uh, conversation that we usually go around the circle and just identify some sort of success principle that was a great reminder today or uh, something new that came up that was, um, you know, uh, applicable in, in life right now. Uh, Josh, what jumps out to you from our conversation? What are you taking away from our conversation today? I mean, from our conversation, I think what stands out is that, you know, if you're if you're watching this or listening to this, you're probably closer than you think to something. So, you know, steps that you can take are taking an immediate action right now. That's one of the things we do at our at my event, right? People, everybody has a goal. Uh, or, or I should say everyone thinks like, oh, I want to do that someday. I want to do that someday, right? I've got a friend who's like, she's like, I need to lose weight. I'm like, what what action are you going to take right this minute? You know, and in at my event, I say, all right, cool. Leave the room and don't come back in until you've taken the first action. Don't come, don't come back. Come back. When you come back in, tell us what action you've taken. And so people take amazing actions, right? One landlady quit her job. Um, but it's like, um, you know, if you want to lose weight, take the first action, sign up for a gym, start tracking your food, right? So I think, um, you know, I think most people are closer than they think. They just need to know, they, they kind of need like a game plan of how to, how to bring that to action. Mm -hmm. Love it. Coach Nick, for you, how about for you today? I think that's so important when you just said, just underscore that for a second. You know, a goal is not set until you take an action towards it. It's like in you know, people that are starting businesses, you know, with some clients that have started businesses in the past, of course, and working on their business. It's that it doesn't exist until you've taken on the risk in a business. Often that's what it is. Like you've signed on the dotted line, like you've got to make it exist. And so you start that process of moving forward. So thank you for that great reminder, Josh. But for me, what's most poignant today is just the reflection and keeping that top of mind right most people play life on the surface nothing wrong with that it's just what the human nature is we kind of get attuned to just getting used to a great enduring about what's there but really the balance and the depth of life is is underneath the surface as i'm often saying and and just kind of keeping us in that construct of like okay if i look back or if i look forward like what where do i want to focus what's most important and that that construct of time really helps us get to that place and allow us to take action that's most important. So thanks for that reminder. Super powerful. I'll take you back that as well. I like the exercise of uh, the future and past selves talking to each other here. So um, yeah. yeah, just really cool to, to hear your perspective with that, Josh. And I'd like to um, maybe ask a final question here uh, to your future self. How does it feel to sell your 1000th book? Oh, man, it feels amazing. You, This is what you've been working towards. <laughs> Good job, man. Congratulations. You did it. Congratulations from the coaches here too. Thank you. Josh, any final words? Bring us home here. Um, anything to leave off on here? I, no, this it's this has been amazing. Um, and if you uh if you want to learn more or check, check get the book or anything like that, just everything's at bestversionever.com. Josh Painter, thank you for joining Truth Seekers. Thank you guys. Take care. Thank you for watching another episode of Truth Seekers. We appreciate your interaction. So please comment, like, subscribe to YouTube, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want more, check out some of our links. Links to our masterclass, The Achievers Mindset. And come join our LinkedIn group. And what do you want to see more of? Remember, we're here to share the simple secrets of successful. So help us do that. What do you want to see? What do you want to see more of? Thanks, and see you again next time.